Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. We are in Chapter 5 and that's Test Management. We are looking at the next topic of this curriculum that is Risk and Testing. So this being the last, uh, second last topic of this chapter where we'll be talking about the risk and testing here, we are not getting into the detail of the risk where we cannot call it as like one of the strategy or say that like the risk-based testing is being covered as a part of it. No, not at all. We are just limited to the definition of risk followed by that certain examples of project and product risk. So let's get into that and understand what exactly the content is trying to convey from here and how important it is to be aware of as a part of foundation. So generally when you talk about the word risk, uh, it's very important to just have a definition understanding uh, from foundation level that risk is a kind of uncertainty which we predict to happen. So when you say predicting, it's just that like it may happen or it may not happen at any point of time. But you just try to predict that these are the uncertainties which we can, uh, you know, probably have in upcoming future in the process. And also at the time when you do such analysis or identify uh, such things as a part of the process, you also determine the uh, level of risk, which is generally, uh, you know, assessed further based on two parameters. One is the likelihood of the event, and second is the impact or the harm which it would cause to the, you know, the process or the event which is associated with. So risks are generally measured in terms of getting prepared uh, to handle such things as a part of like your process or maybe the product itself that what you're going to release should not fail into the market or maybe your process what you're trying to make uh, the product by applying such techniques and all uh, should not have any kind of flaws so that the project itself gets suspended and any other such you know you know, the negative outcomes of such uh, risk involved. So the entire story is all about taking care of such risk and mapping them and maybe identifying them to make sure that we are well prepared to answer those kind of risk involved and we are taking care of it well before this can happen. Because a risk is something which can really, you know, interrupt your execution process or maybe it, if it is related to the product, then it may fail outside, uh, you know, post release in the market and that would be really a big loss to the organization maybe it can also be paid with the complete shutdown of the organization also so uh, there are various ways to you know take care of like you know what if that you know if the identified risk occurs we do have a stage as a part of risk analysis which we call it as uh, the risk mitigation, where the mitigation is just being you know, prepared with a certain number of test cases, which can uh, you know address those risk areas. We try to give more number of test cases where the risks are being uh, you know identified and scatter them accordingly, so that that can be dealt with. We try to dig it out so that it does not happen later, or rather, we try to you know curb it as early as possible, so that our product is almost a risk-free thing. So when you see here a risk-based approach basically includes uh, some of the techniques to be employed like determining the particular level of and types of testing to be performed. So generally the risk can be associated with anything related to your product which can be you know can be related to security parameters, accessibility parameters or any such quality characteristics which enhances your application or makes it more better when it comes to the end user. So th that's where like you know it comes into picture where you talk about the risk and so on and also like you can conduct several other ways of uh, mapping them by you know trying to mitigate or addressing those risks with a certain number of test cases which are uh, quite higher or more deeper compared to the ordinary test cases just because this involves a risk area. So that's one of the basic things to remember from the risk and understand that what exactly the risk is and the two terms likelihood and impact would add value to your preparation from the certification point of view. Beyond that, we have examples of uh, project risk and product risk. So first of all, let's look at the project risk here. 
The risks which, which are basically related to the process of making the product, the entire journey, what you follow, like, you know, talk about the STLC, preparation of the test cases, determining the test conditions, preparation of the test data, the team collaboration, the communication, the documentation, what do you make, and everything, everything includes as a part of the project where the entire process is considered as one of the object to be measured for any kind of risk areas. And here are some of the sample uh, or the template uh, project issues which are given to you as a risk of project. So you can see like we have categorized it further in terms of project issues like delay may occur in delivery or task in completion on time or something which is which can basically interrupt your execution inaccurate estimates relocation of funds to higher priority projects or something so there are a lot of factors which influence or say can be called as the project risk which can have a different impact like some of them can have a major impact some of them can have a minor impact and we do prioritization based on that so late changes of the result in sub sub substantial rework are the another input where we say that okay these are not the major ones, does not have a heavy impact, but to a certain extent, these are also called as risk because it can impact your schedule, which would tomorrow lead to a late delivery. Similarly, the other one is like the organizational issues, like skills, training, and staff shortage, where a skill is like, obviously, you're having a team who is not skilled with what we are supposed to do, and they're trying to, uh, you know, brainstorm their head and for, try to find out, like, what are the different ways to do. And by doing that, you obviously waste a lot of time. So having a right set of people to do that right set of job is very important and how you select depending on your skill. And also the staff shortage would be one of the challenge where you need like around 10 people to do this job but another five people go on leave or some kind of you know issues what they say or may apply for any kind of vacation which is not estimated and these are basically considered as a part of issues and which can be called as a project risk. Similarly, we have got personal issues like people having internal rivalry and they are not tolerant about each other and that may create a lot of lag between the schedules or the cycles what you conduct. Similarly, we have like users, business staffs or subject matter experts, the SMEs of the organization which are not sure about like what to prioritize, what to do at what point of time and all. So skill does become a challenge. Further, we do have like something more opinion on the political issues where we say that tester may not communicate their needs or the test results adequately, where we say that, okay, fine, they don't want to put it across stating the right thing at the right point of time and you have a big discussion going on between the development team and the testing team, understanding the defect all about and then, you know, it takes a lot of time again and can create a delay. Similarly, on the other side, like if you talk about the developers, they might be also doing the same thing just to deal with such things and it might be creating a delay on the fix of the defect and so on. Improper attitude towards the expectation of testing, of course, that's another thing where we say that, okay, you are supposed to test from a particular perspective, like, uh, you know, you need to find the defects, but how important the defect is all about, like what is the criteria to be set. So you do conduct retesting, but if you take an overconfidence about that, okay, fine, the fixation has been done, then it is considered like, okay, fine, it is fixed. So it's not about taking an advantage over such things. We need to make sure that it are these are done. Similarly, we do have technical issues like requirement may not be defined well enough. Like it's a, one of the challenge when it starts, the story starts all together where you write the requirement documentations and you're very poor at defining the right set of requirements, which in turn goes to the design, coding and everything else where the, the defects may, you know, skip. And on, based on this skipping of the defects, it might lead to a failure in the market as well. The requirements may not be met the test environment may not be ready on time, late data conversions, migrations and all, poor defect management, like you don't have a proper defect management tool and you see that lots of defects are still remaining to be fixed and you cannot track them. So you do need a proper management as well. So these we put into one category, which we call it as technical issues. To certain extents, we are also dependent on some outsource party as, as well, like the supplier issue where you depend on a lot of factors like uh, you know, importing the tool, importing the resources, when you take uh, some of the contract employees from third party organizations and they don't turn up or they don't really know the task or say like you, you adapted a tool and tomorrow the organization which sold you the tool 
or the vendor of the tool uh, shut down its office then it becomes a challenge to work with such uh, third party vendors as well which can be considered as one of the project risk so remember one statement about project risk which we say that anything which can interrupt the process the execution or the way you make the product is called as the project risk which interrupts the execution before release so all the project risk are can be called as anything which harms your process before release can take place or can interrupt your release you call it as project risk but on the other side we have got product risk which we generally call it as the uh, you know the uh, the risk which are involved with the product itself which is after the release and it basically have any kind of potential harm to the end user or it does not do its expected job or set of requirements in the market and does not fulfill the end user needs so anything which are related to the uh, base components or specification or the core requirements or on the other side you can also say that the risk which are associated with the characteristics of the application or the product what you're releasing like functional sustainability reliability performance usability security compatibility portability any such quality characteristic which is not intended to be done as like you know what it was supposed to and it is not doing that particular task then obviously it is going to be a failure into the market so we have some of the examples like software might not perform its intended functions software might not perform its intended function according to the user according to the specifications a system architecture may not adequately support some non functional requirements that's we are talking about like efficiency usability and all and uh, a particular computation may be performed incorrectly in some circumstances which comes very important when it comes to the calculations of the uh, price uh, when you shop for something online you apply a coupon code or you take a number of tickets uh, when you uh, place and uh, the cost of one multiplied by the number of passengers traveling a number of tickets required does make a lot of difference and if you are overcharged then it will be definitely like the second choice or maybe the last choice for the end user to opt to use your application similarly you know some some applications deal with third party applications where most of the you know online applications uh, connect with a different set of databases so when you try booking your ticket through that third party vendor to the host then obviously uh, there are multiple level of database integration which takes place and if it does not happen then it is a product failure so anything which we say can impact the end user or one or the other way deals with the product after release so these are the risk which are re- related to the post uh, release uh, event and these are related to the products which are in the market now and uh, related to any kind of potential harm or irrespective behavior or unwanted behavior of the product in the market so uh, just to be quite at the layman level we can say that a bb monitor showing a wrong reading is a product risk uh, an application showing poor performance characteristics is a product risk but internally you know we don't prepare proper documentation that is project risk so putting it all together what we need to differentiate here is how we remember or understand a project risk and how it is different from product risk and also definitely some of the extent like you know what is a risk how it is determined on the level of risk what are likelihood what is impact and so on so they will be expecting a question from here where they can ask you a, you know typical type of straight forward question from this section and nothing beyond that so just be prepared with that and hopefully that should work as of now so this that's all from this tutorial we'll be coming back again quickly on the next one so we'll be looking at the next topic of this chapter and that will be the last topic on chapter 5 we have as the incident management so we'll be looking into that into more details and then we will be winding up with chapter 5 so stay tuned for more details and more videos coming up uh, right after this so uh, just stay tuned for more updates thanks for watching team this is all for now we have up- more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial so stay tuned for more videos do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos and in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this right after this so uh, stay tuned and uh, 
Till then, enjoy learning. Happy learning. Take care.